This is the Rope Masters Video Cast, your source for the best in rope skipping instruction. Hosted by world champion Peter Nessler. For this episode, we are in San Diego again, and we're going to be doing some single rope skills. For the JV, I'm going to be covering a footwork skill called the wing ding. And for the varsity, I'm going to be teaching you how to do a butt jump, um, a little bit different than what most people do. Um, the one where they're swinging on the side, I'm actually show you how to swing the rope straight over and jump through that way. So it's one that I do, um, a few people do, but not a lot of people have really uh, kind of mastered how to do that skill. So I'm going to break that one down and show you how to do that inside a single rope. The JV skill. For the JV skill, we're going to be doing a footwork trick called the wing ding. Now, the wing ding is going to look like this when you're done. It's going to go like this, and you jump like this. Now, you may wonder why you want to learn tricks like that. The main reason why is because it's going to help you um, with your control of the rope and help you with uh, basically isolating your feet from what you're doing with the rest of your body, which may not sound like it's all that important now, but if you try to work up to more and more advanced skills, you'll find that there's certain things that you have to do with your feet that may seem a little bit awkward um, if you don't have very good isolation between what your feet are doing and what the rest of your body is doing. So that's what, one of the big reasons why you want to learn footwork skills, and it helps with your foot speed while you're doing tricks. So the wing ding is one of those that you're going to help you to kind of learn to make your legs do something different, kind of an awkward motion, um, but once you get it down, it's, it seems it's pretty natural and it's pretty easy to do. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be jumping here. You'll be jumping feet together, regular jumping motion. From here, you're going to go ahead. You're going to pick up one foot. You're going to point the toe on the ground. And instead of just stopping here, you're actually going to twist your ankle out, almost like you're, you could, should be able to feel a little bit of a stretch when you go over. So you're to here, and then you're going to come back. So you basically just want to be able to go out. You go out maybe a little bit past your shoulder, twist the ankle out and then come back. And then you do the same thing on the other side, a little past your shoulder, twist the ankle out, and come back. Some of these motions, um, especially if you're doing them in a performance standpoint or something, you want to make sure that you kind of exaggerate what you're doing so it's a little bit more obvious that you're doing the trick. I see some people, when they try to learn this stuff, they feel kind of foolish, so they're kind of like, you can barely tell they're doing anything. So you usually want to kind of exaggerate these as much as possible to really show that you're doing something. So you want to kind of step out, really twist that ankle over. And you don't want to like put weight on that ankle. Um, I'm, when I'm saying twist it over, I don't mean put weight on it and really actually twist it. What I'm saying is you want to sort of put enough weight on there to be able to turn it. Most of your weight's always going to be on your opposite leg. So whatever leg's on the ground, whatever I'm doing here, all my weight's over here. And then when I shift over to my left foot, all my weight's on my right leg. So when you're jumping, you'll be here, you go over, and you're going to switch right away. Maybe when you first start, you go one, back, and back, and then switch up where you can go one, then the other, right away. So you kind of work on that, and you should be able to do it at about any pace, work on doing it fast. You should be able to go slow, but like I said, really kind of exaggerate the motion so that you can really tell what you're doing. Work on that. You should be able to do it about 10 times um, with each foot in a row without missing, and you've got a master. Varsity skill. For the varsity skill, we're going to be doing a butt jump, um, a little bit different than some of the ones that most people do. Most people tend to do them where they're swinging the rope around this direction and jumping. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to actually jump uh, with the rope going over this direction. Now, what it's going to look like when you're done, um, you're going to start here, bring the rope over, and be able to jump just like that. Now to do this, there's a couple things that you really have to kind of uh, work on to be able to do this. Um, anytime you're doing type of jumping where you're sitting like this, it's mostly your stomach muscles. So if you have a really weak stomach, you're not going to be able to do this very well. So you want to make sure that you work out your stomach, maybe doing some sit-ups, um, some crunches, different things like that. Strengthen your stomach because it's mostly right here. Now the other thing you want to be able to do is you want to be able to actually jump without the rope before you try this. So you should be able to sort of jump up and get off the ground. You don't have to clear a lot because the rope is only this thick. It means you only have to jump that high off the ground while you're doing this. So it's not a big jump, but you do need to make sure that you can get your body off the ground um, without 
uh, the rope before you try this. Now to do it jumping this way, what you're going to do is you're going to start here, you're going to swing the rope over. Now you're not going to, it's not going to be a continuous motion. You're actually going to stop here before you go. It's a very short stop, but you do want to make sure you stop because you have to make sure that the rope is on the ground before you try pulling it through. Um, if you try to do it um, where it's going continuously, you're going to find that the rope's going to bounce up, which if the rope's bouncing in an upward motion, you're going to have to jump that much higher off the ground while you do this. So you actually want to stop when it comes over. So you're going to come over, you kind of pause, the rope will stop out in front. At this point, what you do, you lean back just a little bit, bring your feet up off the ground, you're going to start pulling it through. At this point is where you're actually going to do the jump. So you're not jumping when the rope is way out here at the beginning of the pull, you actually want to start the pull, bring it back about right here is where you actually do the jump and really kind of whip your arms through to get it over you or under you. So when you do it, it'll come over, I pause, I pull, and then I jump right at the end. So I come here, pull, and jump right at the end. So you'll notice I'm not jumping real high. Now, one thing that is kind of tricky about this is if you ever have to do a performance or you exercise on carpet, this trick is especially difficult because carpet is going to make your rope bounce a lot. So what I've always done and I've kind of worked on over the years because I do a lot of shows on carpet is when you come over here, instead of just letting it flop out in front, like this. If you do that, the rope's actually going to bounce off the carpet, come up and land on top of your shins, which is not good. So what you'll do is when you come over here, you actually kind of pull your hands up a little bit so that the rope gently lands on the ground in front of you. So when I come over, I'm going to come over, pull up just a little bit so it'll stop right in front. Then I'll drop my hands down and pull through and do the trick just like I would normally. So once again, if, you, if you're on carpet, you want to come up, pull your hands up, stops, and then pull through up, stop, and then pull through. And you'll notice I kind of lean back, pull it through. And if you get it better, you can jump maybe when it's way out here. But when you first try it, especially kind of wait till it's back here. And you'll notice right at the end, I really kind of whip it when I do the jump. So one more time, we'll come up, it'll come over, I'll stop, and then pull through. And this also helps give anybody watching you kind of a motion where they're like, oh, he really is jumping on his behind. So that's why you kind of want to stop and pull through and just practice that one until you can do it about 10 times in a row. Your behind will be really tired and it'll hurt. Um, but, you know, that's how you do the butt jump. Uh, well, one other quick thing, though, is if you're doing this trick, don't lean back and land like this because you'll land right on your tailbone. And if you do that one time, it's going to bruise and it's going to hurt every single time you do this trick uh, for about a week or two afterwards. So you want to make sure that your body weight is far enough forward when you're landing that you're landing on the muscle and not on the bone. So if you're leaning back about halfway, I've seen some people do it, they're leaning here. This motion right here, you're going to land right on your tailbone. So you want to make sure that you're far enough forward so you're landing on the muscle and not on a bone. So practice that one until you got it, and that is how you do the uh, butt jump where you're jumping straight through uh, in single row. For more information, check out www.jumprm.com.